Good morning. Try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, and welcome to Neighborhood Unitarian Universalist Church in Pasadena. Welcome to all members, friends, and guests, both here in person and virtually. My name is George Shearer, and I'm a member of your Board of Trustees. Neighborhood Church creates and grows an inclusive community of faith connected by love, spirit, and service. We acknowledge our presence on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Gabrielino Tongva peoples, the traditional caretakers of the lands and waters of this campus. With respect for the rights and wisdom of indigenous people, we acknowledge our harmful colonial histories and commit to decolonizing our own practices to learning new ways of being in community and with each other in good relationship with the indigenous people of this land and with the land itself. Today's service is led by Senior Minister Reverend Dr. Omega Burkhart with music by music director Dr. Zaneda Robles. Please take a moment to silence your devices as we begin our service. Thank you for joining us as we continue to prioritize connection over perfection in this hybrid service which is streamed and recorded on YouTube. I do have a couple of announcements this morning. Please join us on Saturday, June 1st at 3 p.m. for the ordination service of our former intern, Angeline Jackson. <laughs> Featuring a sermon by Dr. Sophia Betancourt, president of the UUA. There will be a celebratory reception following the service with dancing and light refreshments. Please RSVP no later than May 20th, which is tomorrow through the link provided in our most recent newsletter so we may know how many people to expect. Let's see if this one gets an uh, applause. Please join us at 11.30 this morning after the service for our annual meeting. <laughs> this meeting is an important part of the governance of Neighborhood Church and we strongly encourage all members to attend or provide for a proxy voter. Proxies can be filled out online, and paper forms are available out on the patio and in the narthex. Our order of service and more extensive announcements are available as a link in the Sunday email, posted in the narthex, or through the QR code on the back of your hymnal. You can always get more information on these and many other activities at the welcome table outside. Again, welcome to Neighborhood Church, whoever you are and wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Welcome to this inclusive faith community connected by love, spirit, and service.
we gather this morning a whole community. Some of us gather in person and some of us are gathering online. Some of us walked or rolled into the building under the canopy of May Gray and pine needles. Others are watching from home and we are glad that you are with us. Perhaps you are finding comfort in your chair or recliner. We gather this morning, some of us expectant for summer to begin. Others exhausted from a church or school year, abundant with lessons and opportunities for growth. We gather this morning, children and youth, young adults, parents, grandparents, some of us with work or homework or final exams on the mind and others with thoughts of retirement and others of us with service projects, perhaps books or pickleball or baseball or poetry in our hearts. Gather with us this morning and bring your whole self and all of the stages of yourself you have ever been. Gather and be your whole self and all of the complexity and sometimes seemingly contradictory sorrows and joys of your heart. Gather together, dear ones, for we are on many paths and have many destinations. Gather together on this bridge that is today, on this bridge that is this place. Come, let us worship together today, this day when our journeys coincide, if but only for a brief time. Let the journey of our today together commence. Our opening hymn is number 1023 in your teal hymnal. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing Building Bridges. We will sing it once at unison, and after that, you can sing it in a round until your heart's content or until you see the sign to stop. <laughs> Each Sunday, our congregation dedicates 100% of its contributions to 501c3 organizations or to neighborhood church-based social justice activities that are making a difference in our community and the world. Each selected guest organization aligns with our community's mission and values and is nominated by church members who often are longtime volunteers and supporters of these change-making organizations. In addition to placing your donation in the plate, 
Online giving is available through the QR code on the donations box just outside the sanctuary or by using the text instructions shown on the screen. If you wish to make a payment towards your pledge or contribute to church operations, please make a note in the subject line of your check or use an envelope available at the donation box. This week, our gifts will support the Neighborhood Church Civic Action Letter Writing Group. Here to tell us more are Ellen and Tracy. Good morning, everybody. So Tracy and I co-lead this group. Um, we took it over from Taylor, who actually started it online during the pandemic. Um, and what we do is we coordinate participation in existing national nonpartisan voter registration and election turnout campaigns. We do this in support of the Unitarian Universalists fifth principle, the right in con of conscience and the use of democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. Also in support of justice as described in the proposed amendments to Article 2, which reads, we work to be uh, diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where we all thrive. We covenant to dismantle racism in all forms of systematic oppression. We support the use of inclusive democratic process processes to make decisions within our congregations, our association, and society at large. We have a meeting on second Sundays, and this will change to first Sundays starting in June. Um, we meet after, well, it was after the second service, so it will be after the only service coming up. We light a chalice, check in briefly with joys and concerns, share our progress, and then work on our assignments as a group. For registration postcards, we get names, addresses, and scripts from Field Team 6. This is an organization which we trust, and they gather names of unregistered voters from underrepresented communities. Um, they write them in a very partisan way, but we modify them because we're a nonprofit organization. Um, and we remove any mention of specific candidates or parties. We then create folders with instructions in groups, uh, in groups of 10 addresses and postcards, which we can then um, give out <laughs> to be adopted, so to say. <laughs> My lovely assistant. <Yeah. laughs> For voter turnout letters, we get letter templates and addresses uh, from Vote Forward, which is another trusted organization. The letters focus on upcoming elections, and the writer uses nonpartisan language to share why they personally choose to vote. You may wonder if letter writing makes a difference about, uh, in turnout in a presidential year, since uh, already people are aware, very aware of the campaigns by the different candidates. Vote Forward has done research and shown that it leads to an increase of 0.8 percentage points in control groups over areas that didn't get them, which is hugely significant given the small margins in the votes in a lot of places, swing states, um, uh, districts for representatives. I went to a Zoom meeting where they were discussing their approach to these studies, and they're very serious. They have statisticians. They're always modifying their surveys with current research on how to do effective surveys of that sort. And I was very impressed and have faith that the, the, what they say is true. <laughs> um, and now, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you. So during big election years like this one, Vote Forward asked writers to save their completed letters and mail them together as a big send on a specified date. Um, so we are starting our collection here. You can see these are for um, October this year. And uh, in the past, we've combined our letters with our local Swing Left chapter and um, driven triumphantly together with uh, trays and trays and trays teeming with thousands of letters. Um, in October 2022's Big Send, we had a goal of writing 2,000 letters as a congregation, and we beat that goal by 25%. And uh, this year, we're hoping to raise the bar even higher and make it to 3,000 letters, but we'll need your help. Um, so just as an update of what we've been doing this whole church year, it's kind of nice to be doing it on uh, general meeting day. Uh, but so over the last eight months, we've completed uh, 1,580 letters or postcards to 10 states, written by 52 people in the community, with another 880 letters or postcards actively assigned. 
Uh, so raise your hand if you are one of the people who have written for us. Thank you. And also, if you are one of those people, feel free to stop by and check with me that I have marked that you have completed your letter so I can move you from that actively assigned to the done column, which would be awesome. Uh, so we have currently 79 assignments that are available to claim right now, so please stop by the social justice table and see me and we'll get you set up. Uh, beyond encouraging civic engagement, our group aims to foster a supportive community. Collaborative writing, collaboratively writing letters allows us to feel a sense of purpose, spread optimism, and take proactive actions during these challenging times. And so instead of dwelling on our fears, we choose to engage in activities that bring about positive change. The great news is you can help our cause without lifting a pen. Postage prices have increased frequently in recent years and are currently set at 53 cents for postcards and 68 cents for letters. The postage cost of this year's assignments currently totals $2,269. Many of our writers generously contribute the postage for the cards that they write, but to make this project accessible to all who wish to participate, we are asking for your contributions today. Please make an impact by contributing to our postage and supply fund. Thank you. Will the volunteers please bring the plates forward? was a maying song. <laughs> Just, it felt so springful. Thank you. Our reading this morning comes from Jan Tadeo, and it's entitled Crossing Bridges. She writes, when I was very young, my family often went camping at Assateague Island on the Maryland shore. It was a long drive, but there were lots of adventures along the way. The last adventure was crossing the Verrazano Bridge over the Cinepuxent Bay. This was one of my favorite moments, she writes. As we approached the bridge, my father would holler back to us kids, look out, it looks like we're going to land in the water. 
The Verrazano Bridge rises sharply so you can't see the other side until you get close to the top. As you approach, it feels like you will fall right off the edge of the bridge when you get there. Creating adventure was a theme in my family. My father would take us out on Sunday drives just to get lost. He would say things like, let's just turn down this road and see where it takes us. My mother would take us on penny hikes, flipping a coin at each fork in the trail to see which direction to walk next. We explored trails and creeks, and we went bushwhacking a few times, always looking for new adventures. Growing up with an, an appreciation for the unknown and creating adventures in unexpected ways has served me well. I like to try new foods and activities and go places I haven't seen before, ride roller coasters, especially the ones in the dark. I love Star Trek, she says, because they boldly go where no one has gone before. I like to explore new ways of doing things, even when I'm not certain how it might turn out. Sometimes I do like to reinvent the wheel, and I try very hard to think outside the box and invite others to open the box for me when I get stuck inside. Unitarian Universalists step out into the unknown all the time as we embark on our spiritual adventures. We go searching for new ways to make meaning in our lives, to create a more just and loving world, and to answer questions of ultimacy together. We seek creative ways to raise our children with inquiring minds and loving hearts, and to provide them with the tools to navigate an unpredictable future. We cross bridges and borders as we learn to navigate the multicultural world around us that challenges us to expand our worldview and embrace new ways of engaging a changing world. Whether we are crossing a bridge from a place of comfort to challenges we never anticipated, or from our own cultural norms to completely new worldviews, we have resources, we have friends, and we have mentors to guide us. If we are crossing the bridge from youth to young adult, or from career to retirement, somehow we find the tools we need to navigate our way to the other shore. For this amazing journey, she writes, we carry in our backpacks a sense of wonder, a sense of humor, and lots of courage. Our compass is the compassion we hold for all our neighbors. Our sustenance is the joy of discovering our true selves and experiencing the divine in one another. Our map is the sacred covenant we hold with one another to walk this journey together. With so many tools to guide and support us as we approach new bridges, it is not such a leap of faith to trust that we will arrive at the distant shore. Together we can boldly go where our vision and our faith call us to go. And thus ends our reading this morning. I invite us into a shared moment of reflection about the moments in our lives that have been bridges to the next phase. In a few moments, we will gather in our ritual of celebrating our bridging ceremony this morning. But before we do so, let us gather for just a moment of shared silence in appreciation for this community right now, from where we have come and to where we are going. I'll ring the bell to start and I'll ring the bell to finish.
with gratitude for all of our paths, our bridges, and our destinations. Good morning. I'm Matt Vasco, your Director of Spiritual Exploration. I have with me Lexi Schwade and Rich Coombs, Senior High Advisors. And this morning, we are going to celebrate and honor the tradition of bridging. Hi. Um, for graduating seniors, we celebrate the ritual of bridging, which recognizes their transition to adulthood. Um, if I could have anyone from the young adult group, if anyone's present, to stand next to the stage to help us welcome them into adulthood. Thank you. Awesome. Crossing the bridge symbolizes crossing into a new phase of life and the church participation while maintaining their connection to those ties that sustain them throughout their growing up years. The significance of this ritual is that it is also honoring the dedication and effort of the parents in our church and the religious community's connection and commitment to our young people. The bridging ceremony recognizes the love of parents and families, the commitment of teachers and advisors, and the support of each and every one of you. I now invite our graduating high school seniors to please come to the start of our bridge. Today, we pause to honor you at this time of change and transformation. We treasure the gifts you bring to the community and stand with you as you face the uncertainties of a future you cannot know. We bless you now as you move into that future and its opportunities. We honor you at this important milestone. We will call out your names and you will cross the bridge into young adulthood. Our gathering of young adults will welcome you into young adulthood on the other side of the bridge. Gideon Cooney Labano. <laughs> Juke Goodson. We have a third graduating senior this year who some of you I'm sure know well. That is Rohan Joshi, uh, Jennifer Van Heining's son, who is graduating. I see nods, thank you. And uh, uh, he was unable to be with us this morning. So let's, uh, let's hear it for Rohan too. <laughs> Having crossed the bridge, I invite the two of you now to come and stand up here with me and allow the church to bless you and welcome you as full adult members of our congregation. Please face the congregation. Let us welcome these adults to the adult congregation of Neighborhood Unitarian Universalist Church and to the UU young adult community at large by repeating after me. We honor you at this time, we honor you at this time. of change and transformation. 
May this church and this faith always be a home to you. We bless you now and pledge our support. Amen. This concludes our bridging ceremony. Thank you, young adults. Thank you, new young adults. And now, please join me in singing our children and youth out to their spiritual exploration classes. I am still every age I have ever been, writes Madeline Lingell. She goes on to say, because I was once a child, I am always a child, because I was once a searching adolescent, given to moods and ecstasies, these are still a part of me, always will be. 
This does not mean that I ought to be trapped or enclosed in any of these ages, the delayed adolescent or the childish adult, but that they are mine to be drawn on. She goes on to say, if I can retain a child's awareness and joy and be 51, then I will really learn what it means to be a grown-up. I personally love this quote because it hints at the multiple truths that we inhabit every day of our lives. The complexity of our lives as a moment, a series of moments that bridge to other moments, never unconnected from the experiences of our past, even as we make our way towards a future we cannot yet know, especially in those moments when we cannot see the other side of the bridge. So I feel like it's fitting today that we have this bridging ceremony at the midpoint of May. Today we gather in this sanctuary as one community. As many of you know, last week was our last Sunday, at least for a while, of two worship services on Sunday mornings. That doesn't mean we won't have other offerings on Sundays starting in September, but rather we are about to begin the exploration of other ways to gather in spiritual growth, in contemplation and shared ritual throughout the week. On this cusp of summer, as we celebrate our bridging ritual, inviting our young adults into a new phase of our spiritual lives, we are here in a liminal time. It's not quite summer, as many of you noticed when you gathered your sweater this morning. But we're not quite leaving spring behind. Surely early spring is over. We are also celebrating those moving into adulthood, tenderly moving away from childhood, but honoring that, as Madeline Lingell puts it, they will be at this age and all the ages they have always been. In these rituals, some of us will remember those early summers, perhaps of our youth, or perhaps some of you may even be remembering your own bridging ceremonies or those of your children and grandchildren. These rituals, these moments in time as we gather, they bring to mind for us these moments of shared ritual in our own lives. Even though as Unitarian Universalists we hold pluralism as one of our central values, we often have a tendency, I've noticed, and I am also prone to this, we have a tendency to think of the term pluralism as it relates to religious values or politics or identity, perhaps. In some ways, it can feel like, sometimes to me, it is an aspiration to represent diversity laterally, as if it were a cross-section of our larger community or what that larger community could be. Sometimes I think about this and I, I see this tendency even in our language of the Article II revisions that our denomination will be voting on. They state, we celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. We covenant to learn from one another in our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace our differences and commonalities with love, curiosity, and respect. And I do believe this language offers us a springboard from which we can explore how to embrace pluralism in all of its contexts so that we can grow in our church community and in other ways that aren't just lateral, but rather through time as rich experiences of those who are gathered here in this moment will attest to. That one word in that statement on pluralism sparks something for me, that word experience. I'm not just talking about age or education or stage of life, although those elements too, but rather what would our congregations look like, I wonder? What would they be like if we were to be truly inclusive of the variety of life experiences in the room? How do we celebrate and create space for all the ways we walk and roll and dance in the world? 
How do we create a space in this congregation that honors the diversity of life experiences, that they are different than our own? And how do we bridge our own pasts and also embrace change? I think many of us would agree that sometimes it's easy to create a narrative in our minds of someone else's life experiences and then to hold them in that mold in our minds without having the flexibility to honor growth and change in others, even though we know we aspire to it ourselves. It's also all too easy to expect the identity and culture of a group to stay the same, even though people come and go and those who come and go also grow and change. Yes, we are all the ages we have ever been, and as a group, we grow and change with the growth and changes that each one of us experiences. And the only way to continue to create community built on love and shared values is to build bridges between the new and the persistent, between the changed and the constant, knowing that we are all evolving and changing at the same time, it has to be a pretty flexible bridge. And it must be remade every time we gather, either implicitly or explicitly. I think that it's right that we're exploring these bridges in our lives, the pluralism of our experiences today a day in which many religious traditions around the world are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. And for many of you, this perhaps does not form part of your religious experience or ritual. For those of us who are less familiar with what that means in the Judeo-Christian context, it's the day that they gathered in Jerusalem, those of many nations and life experiences and languages, and they were able to converse and celebrate commonality despite their differences. From Acts 1, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there are many re readings of that particular text, but I was offered a reading just in the past 12 hours by a dear friend and colleague of mine that I would love to share with you, the Reverend Misha Sanders. She's a Unitarian Universalist minister, and she was raised as a Pentecostalist. She wrote this of being raised as a, uh, to believe in the Pentecost with regards to other and her UU churches. She's given permission to share this language. She writes, you know what is my favorite thing about the particular day of Pentecost described in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles? The most diverse group of people imaginable assembled in Jerusalem that day and God showed them that they could celebrate common ground through diversity, not in spite of it, God didn't suddenly give everyone a common language or perspective. God spoke through people in the ways that others could understand. It was never about the woo-woo. That is a theological term, by the way. <laughs> it was never about the woo-woo of speaking in tongues. It was and is about speaking clearly and deliberately in ways that draw people in and include us all. I am so thankful for her words of framing. And it may not form part of what your religious or spiritual views are, but I do think it helps us understand what pluralism can mean in our communities and our lives of this church. So today on this Bridging Sunday, I am also glad to be celebrating a different kind of bridge. And I think that this bridge will bring us more joy and kindness and more depth to this congregation. I'd like to invite my colleague, the Reverend James Ford, to join me here, please. So if you were here a few weeks ago, many of you saw that James became a member of this congregation.
Now, some of you probably have also had the honor of hearing some of his sermons. Maybe you've even studied with him or read his books. James is an ordained Zen priest as well as a Unitarian Universalist minister. He served 25 years or so, do I have that right, as a parish minister on the East Coast as well as a consulting minister here in Los Angeles. I am glad to say that Reverend James will be joining us here at Neighborhood as a community minister, as an affiliated community minister. In addition to also being a congregant, which is a beautiful combination, but because we are also ministers, it's important that we enter into covenant together for covenant is what creates beauty and intentionality in how we gather. And it creates a, a path for best practices and how to return to a right relationship if we make an error or stray, which we are prone to do. So I'm we an expert in that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have decided that it is important to say these covenantal words that we have for each other here in the presence of this congregation. I covenant to support you, James, in this phase of your ministry by supporting your continued work as minister, author, sangha leader, and as a participating congregant in our groups and events here at Neighborhood Church. I will invite your participation, whether to preach as invited guest minister or other activities as the need arises. I covenant to meet you regularly and to provide a liaison between you and the board and the lay leadership of this church. As we have agreed your work in this church as an affiliated minister will not be as a staff member. You will not have supervisory roles <laughs> or ministerial authority to make changes to policies. I may from time to time request that you take on pastoral, pastoral care roles or otherwise meet with people in a ministerial capacity or represent me at church events if needed but these will be by my explicit request, and you may accept or decline as you need and want to. And as a seasoned minister aware of the many complexities of our roles, we agree that you will refer all congregant matters to me to avoid triangulation <laughs> or confusion of roles. Upholding the guidelines set forth by our professional organizations with collegial welcome and warmth in service of clarity and mutual support that comes with this dual relationship as congregant pastor and colleague, I covenant to clear communication between us. I welcome you as a colleague and a congregant to Neighborhood Church. I joyfully covenant to support you as senior minister of this car congregation and to serve the needs of this congregation and church. This may include your inviting me to preach from time to time as your invited pulpit guest. It may include offering classes or leading meditation groups uh, or other actions as you find useful. I understand that my dual role as colleague and congregant is unique and complicated. And as such, I promise to uphold clear communications with you. I will not take on a ministerial role in the congregation with respect to pastoral care, administration, which is kind of a, <laughs> a little benefit actually, <laughs> or supervision unless you explicitly ask. And for the sake of a healthy congregational life, I will refer all questions or concerns to you as the ministeri ministerial authority of this church. I am grateful to you and to you all in this congregation for being my companions as I embark on this next phase of my life and ministry. I understand that this agreement is between us as colleagues and that my family members are family members. 
there are several floating around. Uh, um, um, family members are encouraged to participate fully as congregants with no expectations for collegial uh, covenants. There may not be a ritual more Unitarian Universalist than two ministers, a religious naturalist, and a leading Zen teacher and scholar covenanting to one another on Pentecost Sunday <laughs> after the young adult bridging ceremony. <laughs> so if there is anyone new here, that pretty much sums up Unitarian Universalism. <laughs> we are so glad. I am so honored, James, that you are here. Thank you. Our closing hymn is number 1056 in your teal hymnal. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing four, verse, four times through the first time in unison and the other three times you make it up. Do what you want. Oh, I'll start it off. celebration, celebration of our community and the bridges that we make between us, the points of connection born of love and mutual support. May we go out into the world today seeking ways to build more bridges and may the chalice flame that we extinguished this morning be carried in our hearts, illuminating where we've been and helping us find a path forward. May it be so.
Let's say thank you to Katie for joining us these last couple of weeks. <laughs>